Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. For today's video I'm doing it for the royalty as we're going to be taking a look at the Transformers Legacy Voyager class Predacon Inferno and does this guy need any introduction? I don't think so. This is the last Predacon that we need to conclude the Season 1 Beast Wars lineup so let's get straight into it. Here we have the amazing box art. We've got that sick looking red fire ant at the front. Some really cool images of Inferno screaming and shouting all kinds of nonsense about the royalty, the colony and saving the queen and as we come around here to the back of the box some pretty sick looking product shots so with all that being said let's toss this out and actually take a look at Inferno himself and as the royalty would command here we have Predacon Inferno and the figure is just great let's take a look at the details so here we have the head sculpt wow what a glorious looking head sculpt for Predacon Inferno I mean this guy looks sick the metallic blue looks wicked we get these kind of spikes or horns sticking to to the front of the face which I think just looks so creepy and Hasbro went all out you can actually take the upper part of the head lift it up burn Maximals for the royalty that is just so sick how he actually has an opening mouth one of the best characters in the show that was constantly incredibly emotive does actually have some proper jaw articulation as you guys can see very nicely painted and sculpted in teeth I think here for the chest the fire ant head looks great with these really kind of creepy feelers sticking out to the front I like how the arms look with the Predacon insignia slap bang there at the top we of course do get the ant legs which stick out to the sides which for the most part I think look pretty decent the hands do appear to be on the slightly smaller side I'm not gonna lie but in all not too bad especially once you actually snap in his butt cannon and as we just come down here to the legs again painted very nicely we do get some faux parts but I mean it's a Voyager I'm not gonna complain too much very nice looking sculpt work and here at the base we do get some really cool looking metallic black feet and as we come around to the back we have Inferno's massive butt cannon which I was so surprised to see has not only been completely sculpted but fully painted the metallic blue on this thing looks nuts and it's one of those figures where I actually kind of want to display it from the back because it just looks so strange and cool at the same time and of course you guys can see I do have the huge butt cannon actually sticking in or should I say the ass cannon and this in itself has been painted and sculpted very nicely I believe this is supposed to be his energon infused weapon but come on this is the butt cannon and looking great I love how it's got a variety of mech tech ports for us to slap bang some blast effects in there to really make it look like he's whizzing into battle great weapon now not only can it be stored in his butt but as you would expect snapped into the hand so you can have him firing away for the royalty which I thought was cool and something which I thought was just so sick is that you can actually rotate the butt propeller much like in the show now you want to make sure that you have got all of the kind of ant legs folded forwards just to avoid any clearance issues but as you can see it does rotate very freely which I just thought was really cool it can also hinge up and down as well so the first transformer with butt articulation how kind of weird is that but really cool I love this I think it looks fantastic and just to make it even more animation accurate let's snap this butt cannon back into place and it actually helps with rotating so that's cool now you can fold all of this up I do believe you have to remove this however so we can create a slightly cleaner abdominal section if you wanted to and I do believe he does sport this look every now and again in the show and as you can see painted it very nicely I would definitely be careful that you don't scratch any of this paint off when you are rotating it you definitely don't want to bump it into any of the ant legs but very nice almost metallic purple here for the back just a sick looking figure now in terms of articulation as mentioned previously we do get the jaw articulation as well as a wicked ball joint this can look up and down tilt side to side as well as rotate left to right we do get some butt butterfly joints due to transformation which I thought was neat for rotation here hinge joint out to the sides a rotation at the bicep double joint at the elbow due to transformation now this section is on its own individual hinge joint and the wrist too does rotate independently so I thought that was pretty sick and we do get a nice mech tech port we do get some pretty decent articulation out of the waist although you'll want to make sure that the butt cannon or the butt propeller is moved out of the way so this can rotate left to right the feelers can hinge out of the way to allow for the hips to kick forwards that far so I thought that was really cool they can also kick 
back to that far. I will say this leg in particular does have a tendency to get in the way. I mean, you can rotate it upwards, which I thought was cool, although this does restrict the range of motion out of the butt cannon. So I would recommend to keep it down, but just be wary. This does become slightly fiddly in my opinion. They can also kick out to the sides, rotation at the thigh, as well as a single joint at the knee, unless you disengage the transformation joint, which does allow for a double joint, which I thought was pretty neat. And then finally, the foot can pivot ever so slightly forwards and backwards and we of course do get an amazing ankle pivot so that's great and the heel spurs are on their own independent joint which does just help getting him into some of those more dynamic poses because of this whole section it can make him a little more back heavy so that definitely is cool but in all oh, a very very nice recreation of one of the best characters from the show for the royalty now for comparison we'll do a few quick fire ones and then of course I'll give you guys what you will want that being the Predacon group shot so first of all, here we have him alongside Deluxe Scorponok and Waspinator, Pterosaur and Tarantulus, Airazor and Black Arachnia, Tigertron and Rhinox, Optimus Primal and Dinobot, Leader Class Megatron, Deluxe Class Cheetor, and the whole Predacon lineup from Transformers Beast Wars Season 1. So I believe that just about wraps up everything here for Inferno in robot mode. Overall, a very nicely done figure. My biggest qualm with him would be those kind of back and legs. They do have a tendency to get in the way, especially of the spinning butt propeller thing. But other than that, really nicely done. So let's get down to transformation. Inferno terrorize so to kickstart things off you're going to want to come around here to the back splay all of this open and take this section rotate it here all the way around and then just collapse this piece over the top for now what we can then do is come here to the front you'll then want to take both halves of the ant head split those just like that and it will disengage them from this locking mechanism that will allow us to lift this up split the two halves flip out the mandibles and the pincers just like this and as you guys can see it reveals some really nice internal detail you'll then want to take the head push it forwards as the chin will actually dip into this hollow cavity when this section comes up and then we just close both halves over the top just like that now what we can do is come here to the arms you're going to want to bend here at that double elbow joint rotate backwards and the thumb will actually slide into this slot. Now, whilst you're doing that, when you get to about this point, you're gonna to wanna to take this leg, hinge this here to the back, and then take this one and rotate it around just like that. So make sure you get that thumb into that hollow cavity. And as you guys would guess, rinse and repeat here for this side. So hinge this section up, bring this, I'd say to the midway point, then rotate the leg backwards, flip this here around now this can be slightly more tricky as you're actually going to want to tab and slide these slots into those pegs so just make sure that those are aligned up and that the thumb also has found its way into that slot we can then snap that section there just like that so far so good then you're going to want to take the waist joint rotate this around so that the front is now facing the back we can then take this section here hinge this in like so you'll then want to take the legs kick these forwards on both sides we can now take the feet rotate those around just like this and they will actually peg into some slots here so let's just snap that in there and do the same here for this side we'll then want to disengage the knee joint and slide this here all the way up and do the same here for this side slide that up and combine the two halves so this tab will peg into that slot so just snap that there into place make sure that everything is looking something along the lines of this now we can take the massive butt cannon hinge this section down and these pieces here are going to slide into these tabs so let's just make sure that all of this snaps into place and do the same here for this side. And then for some finishing touches, there are two tabs on the roof of this piece that are gonna snap into some tabs here. So snap them in there. We can then take the ant leg, hinge this section down, 
Do the same here for this side. And there we have Inferno, fully transformed, or should I say, terrorized up into his really cool looking fire ant alt mode. And this thing looks hella ugly, but in a good way. I personally was terrorized as a child. I watched an episode of Goosebumps where ants become these massive and monstrous things. And ever since then, my goodness, I've been sick of the sight of ants. And I know it's quite silly to say considering they're so small, but when you actually zoom in on them, God, they are some of the most grotesque creatures out there. But here we have Inferno. And and this thing actually looks really cool despite being super ugly to my eye as you guys can see in terms of detailing very realistic much like we saw from some of the kingdom characters so he'll fit right in with our other Predacons I think the red plastic they've used is great really nice translucent blue there for the eyes and the pincer and mandibles also look really cool especially these feelers that we have and like I said, in robot mode, we do get a very nice purple fade over the top, as well as some very nice red paint over the top of this abdominal section. Overall, for the most part, looking really cool. Now, of course, there are some gaps, such as these pieces here. I can only hope that we can eventually see this guy and make it into the masterpiece line, as I think they'd perfect it. I really do think they could do something special, as this guy, for the most part, already looks pretty much perfect. Very nice looking detail for the legs. I think they, yet again, look so gross, but cool at the same time. And articulation isn't too bad bad either so the head can actually hinge up and down for the royalty the colony you can also articulate the pincers forwards and backwards and the feelers too can hinge up and down so i thought that was pretty cool we also do get articulation at all of the legs so these ones here do hinge forwards and backwards these ones can rotate left to right and this one is the most articulated so you can hinge this piece up as well as down and also rotate this piece and due to all of this moving in robot mode we also do get some articulation out of the abdominal section although it will cause for a slightly ugly cut now as far as weapon storage goes you would think that it would store in the butt propeller but sadly you not there's just no way for this to actually get in there which i think is unfortunate so all you're left to do is peg it into a mech tech port on the back which i think is probably one of the biggest and most laziest aspects about this guy but in all i mean this isn't too bad it's pretty much what we would come to expect with just your average transformer anyhow weapon storage is very rarely integrated seamlessly into our transformers so with all that being said let's bring out some comparisons so again much like in robot mode we'll go through a few rapid fire ones and then i'll I'll give you that awesome group shot. So here we have him alongside Tarantulas, Black Arachnia, Waspinator, and I just very quickly wanted to go a little further with this comparison, as initially I thought they were going to retool Waspinator into Inferno, but as you guys can see, this being a Voyager class absolutely dwarfs the Deluxe class Waspinator, Deluxe class Scorponok, Pterosaur, Leader class T-Rex Megatron, and here they both are from a side-by-side -side perspective. And finally, the full shot of Season 1 Predacons from Beast Wars. And my goodness, do these guys look great. It's been a long time coming. I mean, we checked out T-Rex Megatron, I want to say, in the beginning of 2021. And we're now heading towards the end of 2022. So definitely a very long time, almost two years, but definitely worth the wait. Most of these are awesome, with maybe the exception of Scorponok and Waspinator. But I'll reserve my thoughts when I actually give you guys a complete ranking of all of the Season 1 Predacons and Maximals that we've got released in the past couple of years so stay tuned and wrapping up on this review for the transformers legacy voyager class predacon inferno in all a very good figure for the most part i mean this is the last legacy release at least for year one that i'm going to be taking a look at over on the channel and i certainly think i've saved one of the best for last i mean in terms of robot mode really well done with the minor exception of some ant legs which every so often tend to get in the way but you can just smack them down and get full rotation out of that butt propeller i do think the hands are on the slightly smaller side but I can kind of understand as to why that is you know had they made them a little bigger it could have made those claws prone to breaking and especially due to how he transforms I think it just makes sense for them to be on the slightly smaller side and in the grand scheme of things it's a minor qualm I think the paint detail in the bot mode's great transformation surprisingly actually isn't that complex and for the most part results in a very nice rather gruesome looking fire ant alt mode and he looks so cool being displayed alongside some of the other Predacons so if you've picked up any of the Beast Wars characters from either Kingdom or Legacy, you have to get Inferno, as I think he's one of the best ones out of the bunch, and hands down, one of the best characters from the show. Definitely be sure to sound off down in the comment section below, what do you guys think of this guy, has it been worth the wait, or do you find him to be slightly lacklustre? As always, I thank you all so much for watching, and until my next review, I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.
Destruction to all that threaten us. 